Hello students, this time your lesson is going to be a little bit different because I'm only going to be playing a few games and I want you to see how I play, how I think and I will do my best to uh, explain every move as I, as I go. Ideally, you'll be the one playing and then we'll be reviewing your games and I'll be uh, giving you advice and looking for ways to improve. But due to the nature of these lessons, this is the best we can do. And actually, this is a big component to your preparation. You should, anytime you have a chance, review any games from, from books, from magazine, or see how someone else plays online. Because the more you do this, the better you're going to, you're going to get. So here I created a brand new account. And you could do the same if you want to use this website that I'm using. I'm leaving the link in the description below. Just click on it, create a free account. And once you do it, um, let me show you what the, your homepage is going to look like. It's going to be something like this. Um, you're going to have home, play, but then here you go to play and you could play versus a computer or you could go here to where it says live chess and that's what I'm doing for, for this video and I'm going to be playing someone live, like another player who is connected. So here you could choose the different time controls. I'm going to choose 15 minutes and 10 second bonus and I'm going to explain what that means uh, as we start playing, but I really recommend that you use as much time as you as you can. You could do five minutes, three minutes, an hour. If you don't have much experience, the more time you have, the better. Because the basic is that if you run out of time, you're going to lose the game. So I don't want you to be rushing. As you get better and you feel more comfortable, maybe you could do it with less time. But I recommend for the first time do 15, 10 like I'm doing. Or you could choose, if you hit more, you could choose 30 minutes, you could choose um, 60 minutes, and so on. Uh, 15 10 I think it's okay, you don't have to rush that much and then what's gonna happen is I'm going to hit play and they're gonna match me up and it's looking for someone who is connected 15 10 and basically what this means is I'm going to have 15 minutes for my all of my moves so every time I make a move my timer stops my opponent's timer goes down when he makes a move his timer stops and then mine goes down I have to make my moves according to this time. So it's my turn, I'm playing this person, 551 is her rating. I'm going to start by controlling the center, I like to do that move first. And now this move is a neutral move, it's just developing. And now I'm going to continue by developing my minor pieces, knights and bishops. Alright, so I was attacking the pawn and she protected it. Now I continue by developing my bishop. And just like that, I'm ready to castle. Let's see what she's going to do. You see her rate, her, her time. Uh, now my time is my turn. My time is going down. Nine, eight. So if ever, if ever if it ever gets to zero, I lose the game. But I'm not going to rush unless I have less than a minute. Like this is a lot of time. And you're going to see now when I move, I'm going to be added ten seconds. So that's why it is fifteen ten. So her last move was an attacking move. I need to defend. So I'm going to. I could defend with the pawn. But I'm going to develop a knight, so I develop my minor piece and I protect the pawn. And notice, look at the timer now. When I move, notice how they add 10 seconds. So that's going to be 38, and then they added 10 seconds. So it's very comfortable if you play with this time control. All right, he's not attacking anything, so I put my king in safety. Now let's see. Um, the only other minor piece I need to develop is my bishop. So I'm probably going to move my pawn up and then I develop my bishop. Alright, so this move is an attacking move. They're attacking my bishop. I need to either move away, capture, or block. To me, it's the same value, so I'm going to take. And now I'm going to, since this king is in the center, I want to sort of clear this file up. If I get rid of all of these pawns, including mine, my rook could come in and attack the king. I know that's really, it's going to take a lot of time, but I'm going to start by challenging these pawns. So I'm going to go pawn up. I make sure first that I have enough defenders. I have the knight and the queen protecting my pawn, and he has one and two attackers. So pawn for pawn, fair trade. If he takes me again, well, I take with the queen, and that's another fair trade. But guess what? One of these three pawns is gone. Okay, so he did that. That's fine. Now, he should be developing this bishop in order to castle, get away from the center, because this is going to get dangerous. Oh, no, he wants to attack my queen. So this is an attacking move. 
I need to go to safety. I cannot take or he takes me. Well, what if I just go... Hmm. I think I'm going to go back to safety. I don't want to go all the way back. I need my queen active. But I want her to be safe as well. So what is he going to do? He doesn't seem concerned. Alright, you see? So he wants to attack. And he should be protecting his king. Well, um, I don't like any of my opponent's pieces in my territory. Remember, all of this territory is my camp, and this is his camp. I don't want any of his pieces close by, so let me attack the knight with my pawn and make him go away, because one knight right now is not a big deal, but knight and then the queen, it could be dangerous. All right, what is he trying to do? Attack my queen. I need to go to safety. Well, let me go here, check. I don't want to go back. I'm going to attack that king. Now, if he moves the king, he will never be able to castle, so I don't think he's going to do that. Most likely, he's going to block with the queen or with the knight. Yeah, he blocked with the knight, but he didn't realize I was doing a fork. So I was attacking the king and also this pawn. So I'm going to get that pawn just like that. Not only am I attacking now the knight, but my queen is getting close to this king. She just needs some backup. So what is she going to do? All right, she moved the knight. She knew I was going to attack it. And now let me see. Well, let me bring more pieces. Well, hmm, did I bring more pieces? Let me develop. Well, I have to be careful here. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I think I'm just going to develop this bishop. The question is where? Well, I think I'm just going to keep it consistent. Let me just bring my bishop out. And I'm attacking the knight. Alright, so this time, look, she did a very good move. This is attacking free pawn, first of all. She's attacking my rook and attacking my bishop. So now I need to decide, do I want to save the rook or the bishop? Well, the bishop is three points, the rook is five. Uh, I'm going to save the rook. And I'm going to bring my rook here, same file to where the queen is. So my rooks are getting on very good files. If he takes me, not a big deal, I'm going to take it right back. It's the same value, so this is a fair trade. Let's see if he captures. And again, I'm not concerned about the pawn that she took because uh, her king is in the center, and that's what really, really matters. My king is safe here, castled, hers is not. So, all right, so now this was a really bad move. She pushed the pawn up, it's only defended by a pawn and a queen, and I'm attacking it with one, two, and three. So think of three of your pieces uh, pulling this pawn to, to take him, and they only have two uh, defending it, just only two of his own friends uh, pulling it. So we have more strength because we have three people attacking, or three pieces attacking. So free pawn. And not only that, by getting this pawn out of the way and this pawn out of the way, my other rook could come here to attack the king. Of course, after this knight is gone. Alright, so he decided not to take, he realized he made a mistake. But now, what if we just put him in check? So we need to start giving him a hard time. Now, he should not block with the queen. If he did, I'm going to get this rook for free. Yeah, he moved away. And now, let's see if he can find checkmate in one move. Well, I have a skewer. I could do a skewer, but I could also do checkmate. Look, and post, well, pause the video if you want to find it yourself. But the skewer is actually putting the bishop right here. I'm attacking the king, and when the king moves, I get the, the queen behind. So that's a great move. Once I get that queen, I'm going to be winning the game. But I also have checkmate in one move. So I have my queen, and this time I have a helper. So where can the queen go to attack the king in a way that the king cannot get me in trouble? Well, that's going to be queen e6 and checkmate. So see, now my rating went from 400 to 662. Um, let me close it, and let's take a look at this. I'm attacking the king, check. The king cannot capture me because of the pawn, and he cannot go anywhere. Now, I'm going to quickly uh, go back to the beginning and look at 
the only thing that I did, I developed my pawn, then my knight, my bishop, and castled. Well, actually, I developed my other knight first because he's attacking my pawn, and then I castled. Then at that point, I'm reacting to his move, he's putting pressure on my bishop, fair trade, and then soon I go and attack the center. I have two defenders, so it made sense. He took, I took, and now my queen is coming out. And I think his biggest mistake is that he never cared about castling his king. You see, he keeps attacking. This was a good opportunity for him to just go bishop here and put the king in safety. He didn't. Uh, very important, guys. I noticed this knight in my camp. I don't like him, so I attacked him. And then quickly he went back to his camp. This is his territory. So he's attacking my queen. I put him in check. I took a free pawn. Now my queen is down there, but I know my queen only. It's hard to do checkmate with my queen only when he has so many pieces protecting. So he moved away. I developed my bishop, then my rook. And you see, since my rook was here, I was able to take advantage of his mistake. And then check, back in the king. And only now I could do checkmate because I had a helper. So even pawns could be really good helpers. Hit play again. Hopefully I get the black pieces this time. Oh, I'm the black pieces. So let's see how it goes. I'm playing this person, he's 497, and I'm going to control the center. Now he's attacking, this is a very popular move. The moment he does that, I know he's attacking my pawn. So I'm going to defend with a knight. Okay, this is a developing move, he's not attacking anything. All right, so bishops before attacking this pawn but the pawn is protected by the king so let me develop a bishop as well I'm being a little bit more aggressive I'm going after this knight all right so now let me just put my king in safety that's it uh, I, I only have this bishop left to develop but first let me get rid of this Knight. Bishop for knight, I know he's going to take me back, but it's the same value. And now, his king is in the center, so I want my rook to be able to attack. And for that, I need these two out of the way. So let me start by attacking this one. And I made sure that I have enough defenders. See, so I'm going to take with my knight. If he takes me, well, I take right back. There you go. He should be castling now. If he doesn't castle, Maybe I have time to get to attack his king. Yeah, he castled. That's okay. Now, I need to develop my bishop. I could go here, passive. Here, not bad. Here is pretty good. Here is not safe. He could take me. But here is a very nice pin. It's a relative pin. All right, you see? So his knight was pinned. He didn't care about it. So thank you for the free coin. Alright, and now I take the knight, knight for knight. Once I'm ahead, uh, guys, all I want to do is uh, simplify the game. That means getting rid of the other pieces. Or I want to attack his king because I have an extra piece. Well, now let me just go. He's attacking me. Let me go and take this pawn. Alright, I take another pawn. And another pawn. Now, this rook is giving me a hard time. Let me see if I can get rid of it. All right. Now, you see, the less pieces he has, the less pieces he has to, to get me in trouble. <laughs> well, let me see if I can go here. Now I'm going to push my pawn. I could do so many other things. I could bring my rook here and trade it for that rook. But just to show you, uh, I have a pass pawn, so I'm going to push it and get to the end. Then, hmm, all right, so let's see. If he trades his rook for the pawn, I'm okay with that. And I'm doing this on purpose. I want to get rid of his rook, his pawns, and then do the queen and rook checkmate. So I already know how I'm going to win this game. See, I'm going to get closer to this pawn. Alright, so I get that pawn. 
And now this is like going back to the classes when we talked about thinking backwards. Like I already know the check the the end game that I want. I'm just w walking towards it. Um, I'm gonna get this pawn, I think. Well, I cannot take it, if, or he takes me back. So I'm going to bring another attacker. Now I have a battery, two pieces attacking the same pawn. It is safe to take it. All right. Mm, let me see. I want to get rid of this pawn as well. So I'm taking it. Now I need to be careful. N notice that this king has no way to go. So it's almost stalemate, but his his pawn could move. So I have the wall of fire here. I'm going to start check the two rook checkmate that we already know. So he's thinking he can only go here. That's it. Yep, so six more seconds, five, four. All right, you see, so, well, this shows you what happens if they run out of time. Uh, I'm going to close this, and even though he didn't move anymore, the only move he had was to go here. And all I was going to do is, I have the wall of fire, I bring my queen to the next rank. He goes down, check, and then he could go here or here. If he goes here, well, the checkmate that you already know. If he had gone over here, maybe I cannot go there, but I could do this checkmate. Queen in front of the king, protected by the rook. So I already knew from long ago what I was going to do. So guys, in these two games, uh, as you could see, all I did was in the opening, I controlled the center of the board with a pawn, uh, so like this. Then I developed my knight to defend the other knight. I got my bishop out quickly to castle. And right after, I started to attack. Uh, you see, the moment I see the king in the center, I want to start getting uh, to attack the center. He got the pawn out of the way. And I was ready to bring my rook and try to get rid of my own pawn to attack that king. He moved away, I pinned the knight, and now he shouldn't have moved that knight. He moved it, he didn't realize that was a pin, and I was able to get the queen. And from there, you know what happened. So I hope uh, you enjoyed this, this class. Uh, I know we didn't go over anything new, but it's really important that before we move any further, we really understand everything that we've learned so far. And... The most important part now, guys, is that you really, really practice. Practice as much as you can. And along with the, the classes that you're having, trust me, you're going to, to improve. So with that said, I will see you next class.